Hi, I'm Adam McDonald from Auto Trickler, and uh, I thought I would do a quick video today showing uh, how to adjust and set up and calibrate the Auto Trickler V4 for a, a range of different powders. Um, so I, I have from smallest kernel to largest kernel, I have CFE223, which is a fine ball powder, and then I have Varget, and I have H4350, which are um, extruded kernels, and then I have N570, which is sort of special. It has like huge kernels that are 0 0.085 grains. So starting with the CFE223, um, I have everything sort of leveled and ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit slow, and that's just going to run the small tube at full speed. And then I can tilt it down just a little bit just to get it going. And as soon as I see powder, I'm going to stop. And that just gets the tube primed. Um, but the thing is, when you when you tilt it down like that, there's a, like a lot of powder coming through at once, so you need to give it a few seconds to stabilize before you um, calibrate. I'm going to empty and do a calibration. No. So um, what it's doing when it's calibrating is it's it's going to prime both tubes. It's going to run them for a while to try to get a consistent flow going, and then it's going to measure the flow rate at half speed. If it measures a really low flow rate, the motors are going to run faster when it's dispensing, and if it measures the high flow rate, the motors are going to run slower. So it's important that it be uh, representative. Okay, so we're looking for a flow rate between 0.1 and 0.2. Um, in, in the manual, it sort of explains that you want a flow rate in that range. If the flow rate is too low, then the powder is probably not flowing very smoothly, and there's probably going to be gaps uh, in the flow. And if the flow rate is too high, then there's going to be too much powder in the tube. And even if the motors run slow, it's going to be hard to drop a couple of kernels at the at the very end. Oh yeah, so I want to show you this process. If you set a target of one grain, then it's just going to use the small tube. It, it, it ignores the variable of the large tube and the transition weight and lets you just focus on how it's dispensing one grain. So that's 0.98. And you can just press re zero and repeat this over and over again. And then you can adjust the speed slider to give you the speed and the performance that you're looking for. Now I'll switch powders to Varget and we'll see how it compares. That's good there. So I can see, if you look at the tube closely, we can see the stream of powder coming through. So we're, we're looking for consistent, shallow stream of powder. Not too much and not too little. And we want the kernels to be dropping at a steady pace that's relatively controllable. And calibrate. Okay, so we have 0.17. So still within the range of 0.1 to 0.2, slightly higher than it was with CFE. Um, so I'll do another charge, let's do one grain. This is what the slider set to five. Yeah, nine eight, so that's okay. So Varget weighs um, 0.02 grains per kernel. H4350 is about 0.03. You want to get a close-up in here, looking for that steady, consistent stream. Now I'll do a calibration. Point one nine. This is one more up to fifty. Okay. So to recap, we have uh, kernels that weigh point zero zero two grains. They're very very small fine ball powders. We have Varget at point zero two, and then we have H forty three fifty at point zero three. We we're still using the same tilt angle, the same scale setup, just switching powders and calibrating, and the system will run the motors faster or slower for the different powders to be hopefully equally accurate with all three. Also with the speed slider set to five in all cases. That's that's kind of the design concept with V4, is you can switch powders, they flow at different rates, but as long as you're within the right range, then the system will calibrate for that, compensate for that, and it should work.
Okay, so now we're going to look at N570. Um, this powder is a little different. The kernels weigh 0 0.085. They are very big chunks. Well, first thing is tilt it down and see that it flows. So this just shows that there's no blockage, the powder is actually flowing. But then when we let it back to the tilt that works with all the other powders, it stops coming out. So we're going to need a bit of a downward tilt to work with this. I'm gonna drop the scale front down until it starts coming out. Now at this point, we're gonna see a trade-off between lots of kernels falling at once in a consistent stream, but then also gaps and periods of time where no powder is coming out. We can get past that by tilting even more, give it even more downward tilt until we just always have powder coming out. We can see that the powder is coming out pretty consistently here. Let's um, stop this and calibrate. Okay, so we have a flow rate of 0.24. Um, but more importantly than what the calibrated flow rate actually is, it's the consistency of the stream. So you need to be able to run the tube uh, at a constant speed and see that the powder is just slowly always coming out. And we'll dispense two grains just for the small tube. Okay, so a little slow in the mid-range here. All right, 198. Now remember, these kernels are 0 0.08. So if it drops one more kernel right now, it will go all the way up to 2.06. So let's up the speed slider all the way to 10 just to see what happens. So I'm looking for faster in the middle, which we are getting, and then it slows down at the end, and then it's looking for one more kernel right now. And when it drops, it should get, risk, get us right to 2 or 2.02. There, one kernel fell. So within the region of fine ball powders up to like normal extruded rifle powders that have kernel sizes up to around 0 0.03 grains, one tilt angle, once you find it, should work well for all of those powders. And the differences between them in flow rate will be controlled by uh, calibration. In the instruction manual, uh, it, it explains that you want the flow to be between 0.1 and 0.2. That's a general guideline for most powders, but we've identified that with N570, we actually need more than that. It's not about the number, it's about the, how the flow is coming down the tube. So if you can see that the flow is very sporadic and very slow and there's large gaps of time where there's nothing happening, it's too slow. So I hope this video was helpful uh, and informative. Feel free to email me with any questions, uh, feedback, and um, thanks a lot for watching.